Okay, this is a violin from probably around the 1880s. It's a French violin made by Derizé. Um, it has been 100% restored here. It sounds absolutely fantastic. But uh, I just want to talk about what makes a violin play physically comfortable. And everything that I'm describing falls into the category of setup. It's not making the violin. It's not restoring the violin. It just has to do with setup. Setup is the following. The pegs. The shafts of the pegs are cut. Uh, many pegs come and the pegs are way too thick. So the shafts are cut and then the hole that the peg goes into is also cut. So uh, how the pegs work is very, very important. If I take off the G peg, the G string, you'll see two rings that are shiny. There's no dead spots. In other words, there's no flat spots. It's shiny all the way around. That means that the peg was cut and it matches the hole. A lot of shops, they just don't do this right. So when you turn the peg, there's no chatter and it turns all the way around magnificently and it holds tension. If I were to pull the peg out and you look at the peg and there were flat spots, that means they're not touching the, the hole. And that's why pegs don't operate correctly. So set up is fitting pegs perfectly. The next thing would be, is the nut. I can't talk about the nut, how important this is. It's one of the wearing surfaces of a violin. There's only a couple wearing surfaces. This is one of the wearing surfaces. So what happens is, the other day I was videotaped cutting the nut on another violin, but anyway, it's very important that the strings are spaced correctly. And if you'll see from the, this video, the strings are sitting on top of the slot. They're not in a slot. And that also means that the string will glide across the top of the nut when you're tuning it. So some violins, you'll turn the peg and it'll go high or low. It won't get into that perfect exact note. That's because there might be a high or low spot in the nut. So it's very important that the, the strings are spaced correctly and that they don't fall into a slot. The next part about setup is the fingerboard. The ebony fingerboard, not only does it have to fit the sides absolutely perfect, and you want to feel it where your thumb feels the side and where your fingers feel the side, you don't want to feel a glue joint. So this is um, cut, scraped, sanded, polished, so that there's no feeling of a glue joint. The other part of a setup would be to cut the back of the neck. Not every violin has to have this done, but on this exact violin, we grafted a scroll on, so we cut this neck. It's the original head and it's the original body. But the, the, the neck on this, it's cut to a very specific shape that's very comfortable to the hand. Some necks are too thick, some are too thin. This is just right. Uh, the other thing is that there are two measurements that are on a fingerboard. One is the radius and one is the scoop or the relief. Both of these things have been corrected. On a later video, I'll show you uh, more specifics. The bridge, the bridge um, height is not just some arbitrary number. The neck has to be set up to the right angle that matches the bridge, and that allows this instrument to have the most amount of sustain. The feet fit absolutely perfect. The curvature of the bridge is such that when you're playing the A string or the D string, you won't hit the G or you won't hit the E or vice versa. And the spacing on the strings, the space between the strings is very important for playability. Then on all of our violins, we always put a piece of parchment under the E so it prevents the string from cutting in. Now let me tune this really quick. Okay, so these are Parazzi strings. And the space between the bridge and the tailpiece is once again not arbitrary. It's supposed to ring a D. That's a D. So it rings a D because the tail gut, which is this nylon piece, there's two screws on the end of it, and we adjust the tail piece in and out until we get a perfect pitch on the G string alone. We don't have to worry about the other three, just on the G. The fine tuner we use is the finest in the world. It's made in Germany, they sell for $15, and you'll notice if the camera can pick it up that the uh, fork that holds the string, it's been very, very finely filed so that it doesn't break the strings. A lot of cheap fine tuners will break the E string right there at the fine tuner. Ours will not. Uh, another thing is, is that um, the end pin on every violin that we have, it always fits 100% perfectly flat and it's fit so that it's fairly taut. 
if I take apart the instrument and I pull up the nut and it just pops out, that wasn't good. You're losing sound. A nut, an end pin should fit tightly. And then also the even spacing between uh, the all of this mechanism and the chin rest. So anyway, all of these things have to do with setup. Uh, the last part that you don't really see is the sound post that's inside. The sound post is fit in exactly the right place to give the most amount of sound and evenness of tension and tone quality across all four strings. Everything I just said is hours and hours and hours of work. It makes a huge difference on how a violin feels and plays and all of our instruments physically play very comfortably and sound the best that we know how to make them. Thank you.